Hello, welcome to episode 18 of live.withcode.uk. Uh, we've been covering the basics of Python, um, and it's quite a step up this week to go through how to write to files. We are going to write to a CSV file um, today um, that has a medal table, um, which is hopefully a little bit more promising than the Winter Olympics um, at the moment. Um, I think our current number of medals for, the, um, for Great Britain is zero um, bronze, zero silver, and zero gold. This will generate some random um, medal numbers. Um, so how are we doing? Still not great, uh, but better than in real life. So first of all, what is a CSV? Well, a CSV is a comma-separated value file. It's basically values separated by commas. Why do we use it? Um, well, we use it so that we can import it into other stuff. So if we um, download this file, it will often open in... Um, in a spreadsheet program like Excel, because every comma just means it moves on to the next cell. So a CSV is really good for integrating your data with another program. So if we first of all strip out all of this and talk about the structure of um, the code, when you have your paper two, the on-screen Python exam for Edexcel GCSE Computer Science, um, you often see this kind of structure. Um, so a module means something that's built into Python that you can use, and we're going to use the random module to be able to generate some random numbers. Then we've got constants, which are just values with a name to make your code a bit easier to understand. And we'll have a list of countries, which is going to be a list, um, and we'll put some in here. Great Britain, um, the United States, uh, China, and I think Norway is top of the, the league at the moment. You can put as many in as you want. Global variables are ones that can be accessed from anywhere in the program. And subprograms we've been covering over the last three weeks or so. Anything that you define um, that you can then use as many times as you like. So I'm going to make a subprogram called uh, Generate Medal Data. Um, and I want to know how many countries um, to generate data for, number of um, countries. Often, for Edexcel GCSE Computer Science, you'll see parameters starting with a lowercase p. Um, and it's just saying that this is like a local variable, but it's passed in as a parameter. It's something that customizes how this procedure or function works. So I'll implement it later. But what I will do is call it. Remember, um, defining it says how to do it. Calling it um, means just saying its name to make sure it actually happens. Um, if I can spell generate properly. So we'll have some errors here because generate metal data expects one thing of data, one argument, because it's got one parameter defined. An argument is the data you pass in. A parameter is the same data that you receive. So how many countries do I want? Well, um, let's make a, a global variable for that, shall we? Let's say the number of countries is going to be, well, I'm just going to set it to zero at the minute to initialize this variable so that we know that there's going to be a variable that stores an integer value. And then when the main program runs, we can set it. I know it's not strictly necessary. I know most of you are thinking, well, what's the point in setting it to zero first? But it's what Edexcel does in paper two, and it's considered best practice for your GCSE. Um, this tells us that there is a variable. This is setting the value of the variable. Um, len is a built-in function that will count the length of something. I want to count the length of the number of countries so that I can pass that value in as a parameter um, to this procedure. How do I know it's a procedure? Because it's a subprogram that I've defined that doesn't return a value. Right. What do I want my subprogram to do? Well, I'd rather like there to be a list of gold medals. It's an empty list to begin with, and silver medals and bronze medals. And then when we generate the data, we want to go through and add some extra numbers in here. So that sounds oops, that sounds like a job for iteration. So iteration is either a for loop or a while loop. I'm going to use a for loop to use i to count from um, zero up to just less than this number. Remember, this is a parameter. It's the value that we receive from the point where we call it. So if we repeat this number of times, 
What do we want to do? Well, we want to find out which country, generate an amount of medals and add it to each list. Um, so let's generate a, an amount of gold medals first. So we'll use the built-in um, random module to generate a random number between zero and let's say 50. And we'll do that three times for silver and gold. Oops, for silver and bronze. You know what I mean. Once we've done that, how do we add it into this list? Well, this list is global. Any part of the program can access it. So I can just access it over here by saying gold medals dot append. Append means add onto the end of. And I want to add this, this local variable, which only exists within the procedure, to this global variable. So it's in there. Um, and then we'll do the same kind of thing. We'll add to the list of silver medals. Remember, a list is just a data structure that can store multiple values in order. And then we'll do the same for bronze. We've got a list of all of the um, number of bronze medals. And the important thing of a list is they're in order. So the first value in gold medals is going to be the number of gold medals for Great Britain. The second um, value in silver medals is going to be the number of silver medals for the United States, etc. Um, so I think we're almost there now. It generates the data, so we should be able to test it and see, right, I want to see the number of bronze medals. It has generated some random numbers. That first value is going to be Great Britain, but I want it to store it in this file. That's the new part of today's challenge. So how do we do that? Well, first of all, we need to open a file. Which file do we open? Well, I'm going to use a constant here so that our code is a bit easier to understand. So I'll say the file name can be medals, oops, edals, medals.csv. CSV is just a text file that expects text with values separated by commas. There's nothing special about it. I'm going to delete it so that you can see that it will actually create that file. Uh, we're going to open that file, but we need to open it with write access. Next week, we're going to work through how to read data from a file. At the moment, we just want to open it so that we can write to it. And we need to store that file so that we can do things like write to it. And very importantly, we can close it later. This looks like a global variable to me. Edexcel likes us to declare our local variables, but you can't do like... Um, it's a file. I'm just going to set it to none. It's nothing to begin with. I'll just say file to write. To. Okay, almost there. What do we write to it? Well, first of all, I want to put all of the names in. Um, so I'll just put what all of the, um, the columns are going to be. If you remember in here, I want to put the titles, country, gold, silver, and bronze medals. Um, so I'll put country and then a comma because it's a comma separated value file um, gold silver and bronze Very importantly, I need to put that backslash n which means move on to the next line Now I can iterate through every country um, I'll use the same thing I've done here for I in range number of countries at this point, i is a local variable and it only exists for this subprogram. But now I've used it in the main program, it's a global variable as well. Even though it has the same name, it's different. Um, so I'm just going to set it to zero. It's an integer. So now that we've got our for loop set up, we can write that value to the file. Um, so how do we do that? Well, we want to do file.write. And first of all, we want to write the name of the country. So that's the list. If we want to access just one value in the list, we use an indexing expression, as in something inside the square brackets. That would always show the first country, Great Britain. But if I want to show whichever country I'm interested in at the moment, I'll use I, the counter I've set up for the for loop. Then um, I'm going to add on a comma, because it's a comma-separated value um, file. And I'll do what's next, gold, gold medals, um, and then silver medals and bronze medals. Now, at the end, if I run it now, we've got a couple of problems. A runtime error on line 49, because we're trying to join 
an integer and a string. So in order to do that properly, we have to tell Python, yes, I know it's an integer, but I'd like you to treat it as a string, please, using this built-in string function um, so that it doesn't complain. So no runtime errors, no syntax errors, but we do have a logic error because they're all on the same line at the moment, which means if we open it up in Excel, it's not going to be able to process them as a table. So how do we fix that? Well, all we need to do after the bronze medals, I'm just going to put a backslash n for a new line constant in instead so that it puts them on a new line. Uh, and then the final thing that I'll do is just put a little message on here um, that says um, what it's done because it doesn't look like the program has done anything at all. Um, writing um, medal data to and then the file name. And I'm saying writing uh, future tense, so I might as well say before it happens. There we go. Um, so these things here will always be in your paper two practical tests, and you'll have seen them in the CT worksheets if you're doing Edexcel GCC Computer Science. They're there to help you structure your program. I know they're going to be a bit of a nightmare when you do the type race for this challenge, um, but there are a couple of challenges for you to work through. First of all, can you add up? the values for gold, silver, and bronze, and put them in as an extra column on the CSV file? And then can you calculate a total for all of the medals, add up the gold, silver, and bronze for every country, and display it on screen? So I hope that this has been helpful. Remember, you can find links um, to practice this. If you try it, debug it, and extend it to practice writing to a file. And those practice examples are actually a lot simpler than the one that I've gone through in this video. So I hope this is helpful. Next week, we'll go through how to read this kind of data in from a file, store it in a two-dimensional list, process it, um, which is a little bit harder. This is about as hard as it gets in your paper two Edexcel GCSE um, exam. So if you've got this, that's fab. If you haven't got it yet, all it takes is practice. All the best. <laughs>